grid and ground coordinates in North Carolina. So back in 1932, a couple of state highway engineers in North Carolina, O.B. Bester and George Syme, had the idea to come up with a state grid system for survey calculations or for survey coordinates. So if you think about it, it's a lot easier to do the math for surveying on a flat surface than it is the curved surface of the earth. So they came up with the idea of having a statewide grid system. There, that way any project they did in the whole state of North Carolina would be on the same system. And they took this idea to the U.S. Coast and Geodetic Survey, which is now the National Geodetic Survey, and those guys developed what is now the state plane coordinate system. So there's a couple of different projections that are used in state plane, and a projection is just where we take a rounded surface and project it onto a flat surface. We use a Lambert conformal projection for states that are longer to the east-west, like North Carolina and Tennessee, and then we use the transverse Mercator uh, projection for states that are longer to the north-south, like Georgia and Alabama. Now, zones in the state plane system are kept uh, less than 158 miles wide in order to keep the scale ratio within 1 to 10,000. So if we think about it, if we take a basketball and we slice off a surface and we try to push it down flat onto a table, there's going to be some error there. And same thing here, we're taking a rounded surface and we're projecting it out into a flat surface. So there's going to be some error, but if we keep the zones less than 158 miles wide, the, uh, the error will be better than 1 in 10,000. So that's why in some states like Virginia, you have a north and a south zone, or Georgia has an east and a west zone. That's in order to keep that error <clears throat> better than 1 in 10,000. So here we see a plan view of North Carolina with the state plane system overlaid on it. <clears throat> it's an east-west system. So here we have the, uh, the center of the system running east-west. We have what are called standards of parallels. Those are where we take that rounded uh, mathematical model of the Earth, the ellipsoid, where it crosses the grid system or the flat plane. We have what are called standards of parallel. In between those standards, the projection is too small, so we have to use a scale factor smaller than one to go from the ellipsoid down to the grid. Outside those standards, the projection is too great, so we have to use a scale factor bigger than one to go from the ellipsoid to the grid. So in northern North Carolina and southern North Carolina, you'll see scale factors that are going to be the opposite of the center of the state where the scale is exact. And you'll see a little bit more how this works when we look at a cross-section view. So here's a cross-section where we have the ground. Here's the ellipsoid, and the ellipsoid is just a mathematical model of the Earth, a nice curved surface that approximates where the Earth's surface is. And then we have the grid plane, so we take the ellipsoid and we flatten it out into a state plane grid. And there's our standard parallels. Again, our standard parallels are where the ellipsoid and the grid plane cross each other. So anything in here, we're actually scaling down to the grid. Anything outside that, we're scaling up from the ellipsoid to the grid. Now, when we're out in the field surveying and we, we take a couple of measurements, we really think in our minds we're measuring one distance, right? But when we're working in state plane coordinates, we're actually measuring three different things. We set our pole up and we plumb it up here on the ground and take a, take a shot. Then we plumb it up again and take another shot. And in theory, those are plumbed to the center of the earth here. So this is a little bit exaggerated, but we've got our uh, plumb line going down normal to the ellipsoid. And what we get when we measure here on the earth and these are plumbed up and we look at this cross-section view, we get one distance that's our ground distance or a horizontal distance between the two points. Then we get another distance along that mathematical model of the earth or the ellipsoid distance there. And then we get another distance yet still that is the grid distance um, using our state plane grid. So one measurement between two points, we get a ground distance an ellipsoid distance and a grid distance when we're using state plane. All the mass being done here on the ellipsoid. And then we're going to use scale factors either to go down to grid, and once we've calculated from the ellipsoid down to the grid, then we can use scale factors again to go from the grid to the ground and vice versa. All right? So two things we have to solve for. We have to solve 
for the elevation factor and we have to solve for the grid factor. We have to reduce the ground distance to the ellipsoid, then we have to reduce the ellipsoid distance down to the grid. So a couple of things here. It matters where you are in the state because it matters. That's for your grid, your grid factor. Wherever you are in the state is going to affect your grid factor. And then it's also going to affect you where you are in the state by the elevation. A lot of people think if I'm working down by the coast, I don't really uh, have to worry about scale factors. Well, if you're in the middle of the state, it can still be 1 in 10,000 with the grid factor, even if your elevation is small. And, you know, that's one thing that people don't always take into consideration is the fact that elevation matters and grid factor matters. So it's, it's two things that we're actually solving for there. So we take the elevation factor again and use it to reduce our ground distances down to ellipsoid distances. Then we use a scale factor to go from the ellipsoid down to the grid. If we multiply the elevation factor by the scale factor, that's going to create what's called the combined factor. We've all heard that. We've seen it on data sheets. The combined factor reduces our ground distances to grid distances. So it goes from ground down to grid. And if we take the inverse of that combined factor, that's going to give us grid distances blown up to ground distances. So I'm going to go back real quick here. So we solve an elevation factor to scale from the ground to the ellipsoid. And then we get a scale factor that goes from the ellipsoid down to the grid. So the two different scale factors there, if we multiply those together, we get the combined factor. The combined factor goes from the ground distance to the grid distance. The inverse of the combined factor is what we use to go from the grid distance up to the ground distance. So let's take a look at what that looks like in Survey Pro now. So in Survey Pro, I'm at the welcome screen where I can open a job or create a new job. I'll go ahead and create a new job here. And I'm going to give it the name Grid Ground. I do want to take a look at my settings. I want to make sure everything's set up for state plane. So azimuth, northeast, all that stuff looks good. U.S. Survey feet. I'll go ahead and click on next. Not going to use a control file. I do want to make sure the box is checked for select coordinate system. And in this case, we're using U.S. State Plane 1983. We're using a zone of 3200. Our datum is going to be NAD 1983 CONUS. And we do want to use a geoid model. Now, I didn't talk about a geoid model in the slideshow, but the geoid model represents where sea level is. What we need to understand is GPS measures heights relative to the ellipsoid or that mathematical model of the Earth we did talk about. And in most cases, if I tell you I'm, you know, it's 400 feet out my parking lot, you're going to assume that I'm talking about 400 feet above sea level. Since GPS measures heights relative to that ellipsoid, we need a geoid model in our project to represent where sea level is. So the elevations we shoot with our GPS system give us good uh, elevations that are, are based on where sea level should be. So I've got that all set up. I'll click next. I'm not going to enter a first point. I'll just go ahead and hit finish there and then click OK. So right now I've got a, a project that's set up in state plane coordinates. Now, for most cases, if you're uh, if you're out there measuring with GPS and you want to go ahead and, and set a, a job up right now, anything that we measure is going to have grid distances between the shots we take. If we wanted that in ground, what we can do is we can go out and we can say put a control point in the ground and, and take a measurement on it and then use that position to go ahead and calculate our ground scale factor. So to set up a ground-based coordinate system what we want to do is go to the survey tab and then choose projection and since we set this up when we set the project up we'll see that a map mapping projection zone is selected has what we set up there and here we have the option to go to mapping plane ground so we'll click on that right now we're set to use grid coordinates but if we want to survey with GPS or basically just survey in state plane and have ground distances based on the state plane coordinate system we want to switch over to use ground coordinates and we don't want to set the origin at the mapping plane 
because in state plane, the origin is so far away, that would really warp our results. We want to pick a point that's on our project, uh, you know, preferably in the middle of the project, but it needs to be something that's representative. If you're on a small project, it doesn't really matter if you're in the middle or, you know, you're on one side. A lot of guys will use a control point. Um, that they've they've shot the first control point that they set for example they might use to to create the scale factor but you do want something that has an average elevation for the site because remember we talked about there's two scale factors that are being used here one that represents the difference between the ground and the ellipsoid or elevation factor and then the other one based on where we are uh, that's the scale factor so if, if our first control point is say on top of a mountain and we're also doing work at the bottom of the mountain, we'd probably want to input an elevation or use a point that's representative of that middle ground, if you will, or a good representative elevation. So we've got use ground coordinates. We'll go ahead and check, uh, pick a point. We could key that point number in here. You know, if we're hooked up to, uh, to our GPS, we could shoot the point and then pick it here. I've got one that I keyed in, and it's actually a monument that's near my office. So I'm going to go ahead and select it, hit the check mark. So we've got our point, and what this does is this defines where all our scaling is going to occur from. So again, we want something that's pretty representative of our site. Grid and ground is going to be held equal here. A scale factor is going to be created, the inverse of the combined factor, that will scale everything, all our distances out from this point so that all our distances on our, uh, our survey data will have ground distances. So I've got that in there. I'll go ahead and click Next. You'll see uh, it comes up with the latitude and longitude of that reference point. It also gives us our ground scale factor. This is the inverse of the combined factor there. So where we are in the state, we'd actually be scaling down from the ellipsoid to the grid but to go back up from the grid to the ground, we're actually scaling up. Now, if you're working in extreme northern North Carolina or down in the very southern part of North Carolina, you'll actually see a ground scale factor that's less than one if you think back to our slideshow. So, you know, know where you are in the state when you're looking at your, your ground scale factors there. You could also override this and you could type in your own scale factor there. I'm just going to go ahead and let the software do the heavy lifting here and hit next. So our reference point grid he is here. Now you can also put in ground coordinates like 5,000, 5,000 uh, here if you wish. If you do that, it just helps people not be confused um, that these are grid coordinates or ground coordinates. Because if I look at this here, it looks like a state plane grid coordinate, but I'm actually scaling my coordinates here. So a lot of guys will like to put in 5,000, 5,000, so that it's obvious that it's ground-based. I'm not going to do that. I'm basically just going to copy my northing from up here and put it here, my easting from here, because by default, the software is going to be on 5,000, 5,000. I've done this before, so it didn't come up that way. But I just keyed in the northing from here into this box, the easting from here instead of 5,000, 5,000. I just need to note on the metadata from my survey that these are ground coordinates. So then I'll go ahead and click next there. And you'll see there's some slight uh, ground offsets here basically because of the rounding that's taking place. Now all I really have to do is hit finish. I've set my reference point. I've calculated, let the software calculate my scale factor. All I have to do is hit finish. So now under projection, you'll see that I've got a ground coordinate system solved. I'm, I am surveying based on the North Carolina 3200 projection but all my distances are being scaled to ground based on an ellipsoid height of 263 feet. And that's just based on the point that I put in there, right? So when I survey, it's important now to know that whether I'm using the total station or GPS, I am all my distances are being scaled to ground. All right, so I'm getting true ground distances here.